Hi, my name is Alex Parrish. I'm an educator at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. And in this video, I'll be teaching you how to make Egyptian-inspired amulets out of polymer clay. The ancient Egyptians believed that after people died in this world, they continued living in another world. Bodies were preserved using mummification, and occasionally in the mummy wrappings, you might find a small figure called an amulet. Amulets were used as protection, or as a power to bring about good and ward off evil. Ancient Egyptians would wear amulets the way we might wear a lucky bracelet. We're taking our inspiration for this project from a piece from VMFA's permanent collection, the Wajet Eye Amulet. Ancient Egyptians would fire or cook their clay in special kilns that would cause the clay to harden. Similar to the ancient Egyptians, we are going to mold our clay and then bake it in an oven. The heat from the oven will release moisture from the clay and cause chemical changes that make the clay hard and strong. To make your own Egyptian amulet, you will need a flat, clean workspace, polymer clay in any combination of colors. If you don't have polymer clay at home, you can use any kind of air-dry clay. You'll need some tools to help with shaping and details, and a toaster oven or a traditional oven to bake it in. We are gonna start by conditioning our clay, which just means we are gonna roll and squish and poke it until it's soft and easy to use. My favorite part of working with polymer clay is the process of creating your own colors. You can mix two or more colors like I did to make a whole new color, or you can leave them a little layered and marbled looking. Your amulet can take the shape of whatever you'd like. I'm going to make a cat like the Egyptian goddess Bastet. Once your clay is conditioned, I'm going to start by making two balls of clay, one for the head and a little bit bigger one for the body. I'm going to pinch off a little bit of the bigger ball of clay and set that aside for later. First, I'm going to shape the face. So we'll roll that and make one end a little pointier so we have space for the nose and mouth. Now the body, we're just gonna roll out to be a little bit longer. And now to connect the two pieces of clay, you're gonna wanna press them gently together and then pull some of the clay gently with your fingers. I'm pulling some from the head onto the body and then some of the body onto the head to kind of fuse it together then you're gonna to wanna to rub it really gently with your fingers to smooth it out. All right. I'm gonna take some of my extra clay and pinch off two pieces to make the ears. So these I'm gonna roll into triangle shapes, flatten it a little bit, and then I'm just gonna press those onto the back of the head And you're gonna smooth those down just like you did when we added the head to the body. Okay. Now I'm gonna take one of my tools and carve out a little space for the ears. You don't have to have fancy tools. You can use anything you find at home. You can use a paper clip or a toothpick or even a sharp pencil. We'll do just fine. Right. Now I'll grab the tiniest little bit of our extra clay Roll that on, press it on the front for the nose. Then I'm gonna take this needle tool and just poke a little hole to mark where our eyes are gonna go. For the eyes, I'm actually gonna grab another color. So I have a little bit of green here. So those I'm just gonna roll and poke into those little holes we need. All right, now we're gonna take the rest of our leftover clay and I'm gonna roll that into a long thin coil to use for the tail. And to attach that, we'll use the same method we used before just rubbing and pulling the clay around a little bit until they are fused together and smooth. So far, we've just been using additive sculpting methods, which means putting pieces on to make our sculpture 
And now we're going to do some subtractive methods. So we're taking pieces away. So I'm going to take one of my pointy tools and carve out a little bit in between where the paws would go so that we can tell that our cat has legs. All right. Then I might carve out a little bit behind those paws to give him a little extra space and definition. When you're done sculpting your amulet, follow the directions on the back of your clay's packaging in order to bake it in an oven or a toaster oven. For example, my clay bakes for 15 minutes at 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Baking in the oven will ensure that it hardens and lasts for years to come. Thank you for joining me for this VMFA at home activity. We hope you have fun sculpting your own Egyptian inspired amulet. We hope to see you soon.